Hey guys, what's up? It's Mark Maxwell. In this week's production tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make the silkiest, sweetest pad in Vital. Vital is a brand new wavetable synth from developer Matt Titel, and wow, is it awesome. I'm completely addicted to it, and after this, I'm pretty sure you will be too. The first thing we want to do is enable as many voices in the synth engine as possible. Drag this all the way up to 32. Start by going to oscillator 1, and from the drop down, select squish flange. I'm going to set it right around 24. And next, enable oscillator 2, and from the drop down, select granular upgrade. I want to get some nice hiss from that wavetable, so I'm going to position that around frame 164. And when I say frames, I'm just referring to the position of the wavetable. So if I go into the 3D mode, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So when I scroll up or down through the frames, it'll show the position. Let's take this up two octaves as well, so uh, 24 semitones. Next, we'll adjust the amplitude envelope. By default, that's envelope one. Uh, let's get a nice long attack on this, about one second. And round out the slope so that it's not too jumpy at the top. Bring the sustain down a bit. And give it a nice long release. Around two seconds of release. Okay, great. Next, uh, let's get some unison voices going for both wavetables. So for wavetable one, let's do two voices. Keep it subtle and also keep the detune subtle as well, around five or six percent. And since oscillator two will be carrying a lot of texture, I want more voices to widen the scope of that texture. So let's do four voices and we'll set that detune Maybe around 8%. Okay, great. Uh, next, what I want to do is get some movement happening in the wavetables. We'll use two LFOs, one for oscillator 1, one for oscillator 2. So click and hold LFO 1, drag that over to wavetable 1, and then LFO 2. Do the same for wavetable 2. And let's have the LFOs modulate the wavetables in a downward motion. Just the slightest movement will really breathe a lot of life into the pad. And then I want to offset the timing on these LFOs so they're not doing exactly the same thing. Also, I want to adjust the shape so that we have more breathing room at the top. So I'm going to use a sine wave for both. And for LFO1, let's make this uh, a little bit more unpredictable. We'll do a half note dotted, so three beats. For LFO2, let's slow it down. Let's do a whole note. And you can adjust the value by clicking and holding and then dragging up or down. What's also cool is we can adjust the start time of the LFO, or the start position rather. So wherever I place the slider is where the LFO will start. And that will just help to offset the two LFOs and make them more unpredictable. So the next step is to enable our filters, and we're going to use filters here mostly to dim the sound, add more warmth, and remove all the harsh frequencies. To start, go ahead and disable oscillator 2. We just want to hear oscillator 1 right now. We're going to use a basic low pass filter. Uh, you can choose the filters here in this menu. We're going to use a 24 decibel slope, and take the resonance all the way down to zero. Maybe set it somewhere around 10, 11 semitones on that. 
so we just have a nice warm tone there and you can still hear the movement in the wavetable as well. Do you hear that? Just very subtle. So go ahead and disable that one and enable oscillator 2. We're going to use a different type of filter here. We'll be using the analog notch spread, which is basically a bandpass filter. And that's the sort of movement I want there on that one. Just a subtle sweep. So I'm actually going to use a, a second envelope for that. So click and hold envelope 2, drag that to the cutoff parameter for filter 2, and let's create an envelope that's really similar to envelope 1. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but a slow attack, a slightly softened sustain, and a long release time. And I don't want that much accent on the filter, so I'm going to bring this way down and then also adjust the amount of cutoff that's being affected. Okay, great. So let's bring back in oscillator one, hear them together. Yeah, that's nice. So next, let's go into the effects section and do some post-processing. We're going to enable chorus, EQ, and reverb for this. Chorus, uh, by default in Vital, has 16 voices enabled, so let's bring this down. We don't need that much happening with the chorus. And we'll speed it up a bit. We'll do like a double whole note dotted. Maybe soften the mix a little bit too, right around 40, 45, somewhere in there. Okay, awesome. For EQ, we'll use a very basic low shelf. Just to get some of those lows out, because they are a little bit intense. The low mids and the lows. We don't need to cut a ton out, just, just enough. Okay, and for the reverb, I want a nice long reverb tail so that it really adds that wash to the release. So let's bring the time up to around six or seven seconds. And bring the mix up as well. Don't be afraid to go big here. I'm gonna go like 65%. And we'll also add just a bit of pre-delay to the reverb. So nice. And that's it, our pad is ready to go. Let's hear it back with the track now to see if it's adding that depth and ambience I'm looking for. <laughs> thing about this pad is that it's so super easy to tweak and shape to your song. You could open up the filters a bit more or adjust the wavetable modulation or even add some light phaser to the effects chain. The possibilities are endless. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I'll do my best to get back to you ASAP. And if you're down for more videos like this one, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Please, please, please.